Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 9 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. Today we will go into the wonderful world of metal refining. We're going to start doing some really good stuff with our metals and we are going to upgrade our technology tree and I'm going to introduce the whole tool business to you. Now, first off, we're going to go over to our technology tree. And like I said in the last episode, I was saving my money up for that one for tech points. So as this costs you 1,200 points, this is a pretty heavy investment. We can upgrade our labs one more time later for 5,000 uh, tech points. But for now, this is exactly what we've been saving up or metal for. So we're going to go on over to our lab and upgrade that. Shazam! And we got now, if we get that far, another upgrade one day in the future, uh, featuring machinery and metals. But up until then, we have now a total amount of 4,500 points to be expected. Since we have currently allocated like 2,600, that means we just gained like 2,000 tech points to work with by spending 1,200 tech points. So this is one of those breakpoints where it is just suddenly very, very feasible to upgrade your lab instead of uh, teching out other technologies. Now, Apart from that, the city is going really, really well. I am hiring some new people as I want the Weaver's Workshop to be a little bit more busy. We have currently a lot of fabric which can be processed into textiles. And we don't have, uh, or we have cotton that can be processed into fabric. I keep mixing these up. All right, so the next big thing that we are going to tech out now is the smithy. Since we have a lot of tech points to be expected, I don't worry about that too much. I'll be putting down the smithy into the vicinity of my metal smelter, as these are very, well, related technologies, I would say. So the smithy does require a lot of fancy things, furniture and metal, and is therefore one of the more costly and sophisticated industries. We're going to put it up like this. Again, a rather small workshop. And we're going to keep up with those workbenches here. And as you see, when the more workbenches we add in, the more metal costs we get and the more furniture costs we get. So we're rather keeping things a little bit low. As you see here, the costs go down if you uh, stabilize the building by all means, but it is, in my humble opinion here right now, better to aim for a small and affordable building instead of uh, aiming too high. So we're going to construct that smithy as it is, and the next 64 pieces of metal are going into that. But it doesn't matter too much as our smelter is still churning out really nice amounts of metal at a very, very constant rate. My next idea or plan is pretty simple. I want to crank up the industry behind the fabrics more, and that will open up another window of exports for us. As you, export, as you expand your city, you will also always come to the point where you will notice that this game demands more and more workers from you. So every new industry, every new something that you found is another extra effort of workforce. And you really do notice that, especially food stalls and markets and the like, they do cost you a lot of extra workforce. So what I'm trying to get down to with all that rambling, let's a bit more pottery, is that it really pays off to make your service buildings as efficient as possible. You know, the less people you have busy tending lavatories, the better, so place them smartly. And the same goes for janitors and market food stall people, uh, tavern people, and so on and so forth. I think I'm, pretty, I'm sure you get the idea. Okay, so tools. We can produce tools as soon as the smithy is down. Tools are a extra that you can add into all of your 
work areas. So let's see. There we go. So the standard setting will distribute tools to each and every one of your industries when you when you start them. And this, uh, you access this by clicking this hammer thingy. And here you see how many tools your entire city does want to have and compared to how many tools you actually do have right now. Tools are a uh, consumption good. That means if they, uh, if your people are using tools, they will, will eventually wear out and they will be needed to be replaced. Therefore, plan it wisely. Therefore, your uh, game is not that smart at the beginning. So you click on in here and we forbid now for starters, everybody those tools. I don't know, I ah, yeah, we can't do it like that. So the last thing you want is that tools get assigned wildly and blindly to everybody. I personally am a big fan of investing my first tools into my tool workshop and then into the metal smelter or vice versa. It's just very simple. If a workshop uses tools, it receives a big fat bonus to productivity because they use tools instead of their hands. That's a very simple and easy to understand relationship and therefore I personally hate nothing more than the standard setting which just uh, yeah, take some food from me. Uh, which just does waste your tools everywhere, uh, which is not wise at all. Just my personal five cent about that topic. Instead, we are going to funnel our starting tools into making more tools and faster. It's personally, my opinion, much, much better. So we are going to authorize the next batch of people as we need people working in the toolmakers workshop. And as you see there, we are on a decline in terms of loyalty and happiness. So whenever you notice that this meter goes down like that, it is time for you as a wise and uh, good ruler to check on out what's wrong there. So that's that for now. We are going to tell those people here at the smelter to use all the tools they can get and at the smithy the same as you see here some workshops can get take in more tools than others here we can only use two tools here we can use up to eight tools but there we go so let's check with our meters we see here very easily what the problems are the services are going down so clear culprit here the booze pits the occupations go down that's mostly if because i put up uh, jobs that they hate a bit and the religion goes down here yeah, shrine excess goes down severely so it's very easy to get yourself a little bit of uh, extra happiness just by left control clicking a uh, shrine there so people can have a bit of a good time over here as well so Let's put that down here as a centerpiece. And the same thing on the other side there. So checking back with your uh, with your surface meters, I, I keep preaching that on and, uh, uh, over and over in the series. I know, but only because it is so darned important and you will go down quite quickly if you don't. So here we go. New chopping order for the trees. As I still haven't uh, gotten myself to the point where I'm just fetching up enough wood from the woodcutters. Do that to your own liking. All right, we have by he by now here on the pasture full output as well. We see here that the prices for meat are a bit bad since we are exporting so much, so we shouldn't bring up more than that. All right, and we now got to wait for those shrines to be built. At the same time, we now see that we are currently working on these tools. At the same time, also on the metal smelting. I want to introduce a few meters that I haven't talked about. If you check this here, this check mark tells you that the workshop is fully operational. And this red flag tells us that the workload is low. Mostly because we are not currently uh, providing enough metal for this place obviously but this will change very very quickly 
we'll let that run for a couple of days. And up until then, we're going to head on over next to another very, very important project. And that is healthcare. So healthcare is one tech that unlocks hospitals. And we are also going to unlock masonry. These are for a bit of the future, but I'm unlocking them already as I do see no hurt in having these technologies available now that we have the tier two tick available for us. Okay, so fabric is being overproduced. This is really, really good as this allows us now to give our citizens access to fabric for their homes very soon. I'm gonna wait a, a wee bit longer until these stockpiles uh, fill up properly. It's uh, not a wise choice to be too eager here and too quick. And boom, here goes another shrine. And now we can see that the religion meter is slowly filling up again. So we'll need yet another tavern up here. That's another thing, because that tavern here is uh, truly outrageously far away. So we're going to use this tavern blueprint, and we're just going to plot down one over here. I also pay close attention to the fact that I'm placing these down as far away from each other, so they can um, help each other out in terms of... Um, coverage for the city. Now then. So my first crime has committed. So yeah, that is also the wake up call for us to build ourselves a guard post. But to build ourselves a guard post, we will require new materials that we don't have yet, namely armor and cut stone. So the armor I will I, you can either make them yourself at tailors, or you import them. The cut stone, we're going to make ourselves as well. For now, we will just, um, well, let the crime pass uh, like it is. Let's see. There's a bit of homelessness happening again. So as you see here, we just need to add in a couple of extra houses here and there. Oh, I, I, I hope so dearly that nobody entombs himself. At spots like these, sometimes your, your citizens are dumb and kill themselves. We'll see about that. But overall, we are now... Let's see. Ah, we're, we're going to make it like that. These guys don't get the tools yet. We're, we're going to spread tools exclusively to these folks. So you will now notice that the, the output of that workshop is steadily increasing due to the application of tools. That's that. The annoying part about tools is that they have a daily degradation. As you see here, the tools that we are using, there is half a tool daily degrading. So that means half a tool of our output here is going to be degraded by that fact as well. So yeah, that's just something you have to take care of. And of course, oh God, I'm so dumb. <laughs> you should really have some crates for these. I'm very sorry. Tools are one of the goods that I strongly recommend you to not export them under no circumstances, as these are really, really just too valuable and too good to give to somebody else, because you could always look at it like this. If you sell away your tools, you're basically selling away a lot of profit due to the simple fact that you could have earned way more stuff that you can't sell by just applying the tools to a workshop that produces stuff that you want to sell. Be that uh, fruit, grain, whatever. There's so, so many, so many things where you can apply that. It's quite simple. All right, we're going to export all of our meat by now, as this industry is, to me personally, 
just existing to sustain our income. It's just that. Therefore, we're uh, we're going to export now in a larger style. We ran out of grain as well, but harvest is in very soon. So what I see here is that my imports are draining my income harder than I am able to replenish. That is a uh, pretty common thing happening. Shouldn't be too worried about that if it happens. The only thing that's now important is that we should think about something to uh, get our get our import income back. As you see there, we are dropping in terms of food stockpiles. Not to a point where I need to be worried about it, but uh, it certainly is a nuisance. All right, so services to taverns stay low simply because the booze is not as available as it should be. You can't really change that that easily. Let's build another stage for the other half of the city. As we would just need to crank up our, our production to change something about that. But the produced booze will now be spread over two taverns and eventually it takes it some time. The um, availability of these services will increase again. All right, we have a lot of workers available, so we can crank up the we the amount of weavers even further. And as you see there, we are constantly producing more and more fabric now. And the tailor is now not capable of consuming all the fabric anymore. Perfect. So we can now assign that as our next export good, as this is a pretty decent uh, uh, stuff to be sold. And this is also a spot where our city needs to revolve around for a while now, as we are not capable of growing further without expanding our income now. As you see there, our, our imports are eating up our, uh, our money that quickly. Our farms are not churning out enough food for uh, to 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 feed the entire city. Therefore, we just need to sit back, wait until the tool production kicks in and uh, makes the city more productive. As we imp introduce here more and more tools into these workshops, they they become more and more effective. As we now get more and more fabric into our warehouses, we also gain the ability to export that stuff. Everything will balance back at some point. But the really important um, thing to, to point out here is that it's really crucial that you don't expand too fast. This is something like a, uh, like a bottom line that applies to Songs of Six very, very often game really loves to bully you over if you happen to be expanding too fast. That's just a uh, that's just a common thing happening. All right. So as you see here, the output of that uh, workshop is steadily cranking up as it is here. Tools make up a 25% increase of production. And that's pretty, pretty heavy number. As we see now that we get more production out of uh, or input and i personally deem that very very valuable therefore our farms are the next receivers of tools as these guys are providing our survive uh, providing the survival for our city cranking up all productions all over the board by 25 percent is something you really do notice and it is something that does, though, take some time until it really hits town. So we are going to research now that we have enough tech points available for the first time, edible crop optimization, as this is yet another factor that helps us to get more out of war farms. Personally, feel like these technologies are darn valuable, but it's all about the timing when you apply them. Because 500 tech points are, the more powerful you become, less and less of a uh, number to uh, worry about. But at the beginning of the game, it is like 90% of your entire tech pool. So, that's just like that. That's why there are 
technologies that are cheaper and technologies that are more costly. So tavern excess is still going down, 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 as we have no grain to work with. The harvest is still a couple of days uh, away from us. So here we have now the same thing, the gradation of tools. The easiest way to determine whether you can invest more tools into your city or not is simply by waiting until the tool crate fills up again. If it does fill up again, congratulations, you're producing enough tools. If not, I'm sorry to tell you, but you need to produce more tools. It's that simple. Now then, the grain harvest is in. And currently, of course, we don't see any uh, extra production uh, ratio here. Let's see. Really hope that <laughs> the uh, tools work the way I, I, I think they do here. It could be also that it just makes the whole thing go faster. Please let me know if you know that is something I'm not sure about, if tools actually pr increase the yield on fields or, or not. I'd be very, very uh, happy if I'd get some information about that. Anyways, so we got now one of the most important uh, industries in the game rolling, and the best part about it is we are even overproducing in terms of metal. The only big problem that our entire city now sees is a terrible lack of income. This is something that we need to take care about next as we expand even further. The thing here is we don't have any industries cranking out materials that are worth a lot of money yet. That's where we are suffering most. I still have 24 people available, so I think that we are simply best off by staffing out the weaver as hard as we can as the extra production of fabrics is for me one of the uh, most promising um, parts of our of our future so to say <laughs> all right so we are now also capable of cranking up the tailors i like the idea of that so let's maybe unemploy five weavers so we have a handful of odd jobbers left and you notice here that my city is stagnating since a while. That is what it is. We also happen to have not enough speaker places, so we might change that a bit. So we control copy here one of those. And in the meantime, yeah, we're, we're, we're going for good relations with our neighbors, why not? And in the meantime, we are now cranking out more and more stuff that makes our people happier. As we are now producing more clothing than before, that should help definitely a bit. We're also producing more cloth than before, that should also help a bit. Now we could even crank up the uh, cotton production by a lot as well, so... There's a lot of potential for this city that we can build upon. All right, so let's see. We have changed a couple of things. And let's see what kind of uh, harvest we will get with those, new build, uh, with those new technologies and tools. As you also might have noticed, tool making is a painstakingly slow and... Uh, terrible process. This workshop here, by the way, can increase its output even entirely doubly by having enough tools available. So there's a lot of things that we can work on here. But we are currently also not producing enough ore anymore. So all in all, we do notice that our economy does spend more money than it earns. So that is a point that we need to adjust on. Definitely something that we cannot uh, change or stall. So one good news, though, is the access to uh, clothing is uh, growing, ever, ever growing. 
So at that point, we have now kind of like uh, several options that we could go into. We could s start selling off or more of our uh, textiles earlier. That's one thing that we could do. But I am not that inclined to do so, as I am very afraid that this might end up with me having not enough fabric for my future plans. Fancying up the houses. Because this is uh, here one of the really, really cool steps forward for your city. But it is also a real, real big effort. So. To lower the pressure a little bit on my city, I am going to lower the pottery imports, as these are the imports that I can forget about the easiest. Let's put it down like that. All right. Our selling of wood is also not getting us too far anymore. We're also not selling too much bread, as we're not producing any much of that. So all in all, yeah, as you can see here, wood selling is hardly worth it anymore. So we might as well stop doing that altogether, as it is not really good for our industry anymore. Seriously, we're not getting to that many denarii in out of that. So, but finally, new people want to visit our city again, so there might be something good happening here. All right. Take your time when employing the whole tools business in your city, as it will take a while until tools have been spread throughout your city. There we go. But we're getting there, and stuff is getting done there. Not quite sure if tools do what I think they do here. I'm sorry about that if I get you here into this experimentation mode with me. It's just like not every production is uh, involved, uh, influenced by um, tools, and I'm, or is it? I'm not quite sure if I'm overlooking something here or not, but I'm pretty sure the wisdom of the comment section might help me out of here. Okay, so what I totally dislike here is that the amount of food days is uh, ever declining, but we are also increasing our stockpiles here, and. One thing is happening on its own here. Metal industry is cranking in extra income here. We are now no longer importing costly stuff anymore. And we should see also a nice increase of yields on our farms. There we go. Perfect. So, there we go. Most importantly, this also does apply to my grain farms. So we gain more of all the goodies that we require. If you ever happen to be in one of those situations, I strongly recommend to to not overstrain yourself. Uh, keep your feet still, so to say. It's, there's nothing worse than overreacting on that and expanding into wrong directions or stuff like that. In a situation like this, the most important things are to think about where can we get ourselves money in again. We are also seeing a uh, stop of our metal production, so I'd say we should think about a real, real good economy uh, strategy for our next episode, and I'm looking forward to that. Until then, my good friends, it's time to say goodbye yet again. As you see there, tool making is a very, very costly art. If you can get yourself um, ore in from somewhere else, any outside source of ore is really good and massively improving your business. And all I can say is, I personally think it is massively worth the deal. Even if you are playing like me here with Cretonians that are cranking down the uh, space by, by only being Cretonians, the output of that workshop already a lot. So you get the idea. But being able to put the tools into any of these workshops is just such a huge 
multiply it on all of your industries, you will quickly notice the difference whether you got it or you you not, you don't, you know. Therefore, thanks for watching, everybody. Leave me your comments down below. We will be back after I have had a little bit of a thinker about expanding the economies for the city. I'm pretty sure I'll come up with something tasty for you. Leave me your comments down below. A thumbs up would be wildly appreciated. Consider subscribing. And of course, I'd be very, very delighted if you'd give a look into the description box. You'll find links to more Songs of Six videos there. And you'll also find my Discord. And last but not least, also the Patreon of mine. And buy me a coffee and paypal i'd be really really happy about you checking these out but either way thanks for the support from you by watching these videos and of course a big big thanks to the supporters of the channel i deeply appreciate and i really hope that you had a good time see you all next time bye bye